sorry I've been away so long. I got something in my eye. Hi everyone, this is Angela Yvonne for DivaGuysDaily.com and this is your final recap for Insecure, season two, which I will affectionately call when is season three going to get here? Because I need some answers. So the show opens up to Issa in her old neighborhood looking for a spot that she used to frequent and realizing that things have changed, i.e. gentrification, symbolism. So Mr. Lawrence is doing all the things that we feel that he should have been doing with Issa. His glow up is real. He has a new apartment and it's better than Issa's. He's doing marathons. He's doing great in his work. And what is that? He got a new boo, a partner. Now, a partner is a really good match for Lawrence because she's in the tech world, she's understanding all the things that he's going through, but she is not Issa. I was kind of low-key, high-key, celebrating the fact that Lawrence is growing up, but I felt like he should have did that with Issa. Issa was in the trenches while he was spending his time two years depressed and on the couch. But now that he has this new chick, he's doing all the things that he should have been man enough to do in the relationship with Issa. Now, what I like about a partner, she is not here for the bullshit. A partner and Lawrence were, you know, just getting to know each other. And a partner casually lets Lawrence know that she is still involved, heavily involved, with her work boo. Now, if you saw the episodes a couple um, episodes back, you saw that she had slept with one of her co-workers during, you know, their little wind down at work. But she, you know, scoffed it off or passed it off as in with nothing. But when she speaks with Lauren, she's like, yeah, you know, we we screwed a couple of times. This is, you know, I didn't just, you know, hit him off once. We screwed a couple of times. I still talk to him on the phone. We work together, but it's no, you know, it's, it's no big deal because his sex was trash. Lawrence gets all in his feelings and he decides that he's going to passively tell a partner, you know, um, I don't appreciate you still kicking it with your work boo. Um, are y'all still got something going on? Because you know, I don't like messing with liars. That's when a partner gives Lawrence the business. I already told you, I was not no longer screwing him. It's no big deal. He makes me laugh. We cool, we all work together. And oh, by the way, I'm not here for the BS. I know that you are passively, aggressively trying to come at me because of your ex. And I'm not here for it. I already did it. I'm not gonna do it again. I'm grown and I'm out of here. Peace. Molly is interviewing at other firms because she wants to know what's out there because her firm clearly does not appreciate what type of asset she is and her new work boo, Quentin, is all for it. Quentin thinks that Molly is amazing, she's smart, she's beautiful, but typical Molly, she is not checking for Quentin. Ain't nothing wrong with Quentin. He's cute, he's chunky cute, he's successful, and he is checking for you and he is single. Girl, just because he doesn't look like a Maserati doesn't mean that he can't get you there just as fast. Molly is back with her therapist and she tells the therapist all about Quentin. And she's like, well, Quentin is cool, but he's not who I should be with. The therapist is like, girl, you need to stop talking about should and you need to talk about could. So that really opens Molly's eyes, I mean legs, I mean mind about Quentin. Celebrate a job well done, Quentin brings out the brown liquor, i.e. Hennessy, i.e. Satan's essence. And it helps Molly to open up to Quentin. <sighs> My name is Angela Vaughn and I too have tasted the Hennessy, i.e. the devil's juice. And that is all that I'm going to say about that. From her apartment management saying that the rent is going to increase which means that Issa is going to have to move because we all know that she's not making a lot of money at her nonprofit she decides to have a yard sale and as she's selling off all these things the last thing to be sold is the blue couch now everyone knows that the blue couch symbolizes the first book the first big purchase that Lawrence and she made as a couple it was sort of showing that they were growing up and getting things moving so she calls Lawrence and she's like, Lawrence, you know, I know you need a couch. I'm moving. I'm not going to take it with me. Come get your couch and also some of the things that you've left here in the apartment. And for it to not be awkward, I will not be here. Lawrence comes and picks up his things, but he decides to wait for Issa. Issa comes in and she sees Lawrence and she's like, oh man, you know, I wasn't expecting this because, you know, last time I saw you, you cussed me out and called me a hoe. But, you know, I'm just going to live in this moment. 
Issa decides to profess her love to Lawrence and it's the most powerful thing that I have ever seen because you as an adult are admitting that, you know, Although I effed up, I still love you and that's not going to change, but I'm sorry. I'm just sorry that it all ended up this way. You know, she was sorry for Daniel and Daniel really wasn't about Lawrence. It was about Issa. You know, she really wants the best for him and that she is sorry that she fell short of being a better support system for him. Lawrence in turn returns the love saying that you know he's still in love with her and he's sorry that when he was dealing with all of his stuff he wasn't living up to the standard that you know Issa expected. Everybody is just like crying and carrying on because you know this is what you wanted. You wanted Lawrence to grow up. You wanted Issa to realize that you know Lawrence all around was a good dude and that they should try to work it out. But you know sometimes love is difficult. Sometimes you know you just can't get it right. Sometimes a separation makes you realize you know the things that you have and the things that you don't have. So as they are walking out the door they give us a flashback on what Issa and Lawrence could have been. It shows that they could have gotten married. They had this beautiful, delicious baby. You know, um, Lawrence is, you know, just so in love. They're making love. They're just doing all the things, showing and expressing black love. But what I did like is that they were still in that apartment. But I guess that was something that, you know, I guess rent's high in California. I don't know. But I, that just sort of threw me a, for a loop because we all know that Lawrence is making money. So back to reality, the characters are all still in all kinds of fuckery. Issa decides that she's going to go and stay with Daniel for whatever reason and I don't get that because, you know, he almost shot your eye out, girl. Molly decides that, you know, Quentin is good, he's alright, you know, he, he, he hits my check marks, he's, he's cute, he's successful, you know, he's supportive, but he's not troll. Girl, I understand, I know, Hydro is, oof, Hydro is Hydro. And another question that is unanswered is, where was Tiffany? During all of this, all the shenanigans, when they're having, you know, girls night out and, you know, watching Due North, Tiffany was nowhere to be found, but she turns up pregnant. But if you look through both the episodes, because the way that they broke down the episodes, it was like 30 days in the life of each character. You know, in one part, she told Derek that she was going to see the girls and watch Due North. But then in another part, she calls the girls and says, you know what, I'm not going to be there. So where was Tiffany? Hmm, I need answers. I need answers. I'm so excited for season three. I am so, 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 so excited for season three because I'm excited for the development of all of these characters. You know, what I learned about Insecure and what Insecure helped me to find out is that love is, is different. Love is on a whole different level. Some things that you just can't imagine going through. They showed us different aspects of love. They showed, you know, making it through being cheated on. They showed, you know, longevity in marriage but there's still some bumps in the road they showed us about open marriage they showed us about you know respecting our whole time because some of us don't even get our whole time they show us you know sometimes it's not so easy to let go and I'm just so appreciative that you know insecure is on the air and it's showing us that black love black lives black friendship is bomb Thank you so much for watching my recap. I hope that it was delicious. I hope that it was hella good. I hope that it was hella perspective. I hope it was hella LA. And I am Angela Yvonne for DivaGuysDaily.com and I hope to see you soon. Bye.